Byron said that uh, he wouldn't turn what you and LeBron have a rivalry because you guys like each other too much. It's ironic, of course, that you guys combined in the 10 of the last 12 NBA finals who never matched up. How would you describe these last 13 seasons with LeBron? Well, I mean, it's been different. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's not a rivalry. I wouldn't say because we like each other too much. I don't like anybody at that much to not, to not have, <laughs> have that. Um, but in all seriousness, I mean, you know, when he first came into the league, Cleveland was still trying to figure things out, right? And we were – we hit our stride a lot sooner. And then obviously there were years where we could have faced each other. Um, I think they got bounced by Orlando one year and – uh, so it just never worked out. So from that sense, a real rivalry never developed. You know, I never really, to me, I mean, rivalries aren't made in a regular season, no matter how much people try to hype it up. I mean, you gotta, you, know, you gotta duke it out for what really matters. So if in that sense, we never had one. Does that upset you at all? The fact that you never had that opportunity with LeBron? No, it doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. You know, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm disappointed for the fans. You know, because you you want to have, you know what I mean? You want to be able to see that. And uh, um, as a competitor, it would have been fun matching up and trying to figure out how to deal with him for a seven-game series, you know. That that's that would have been a fun puzzle for me to try to study and do homework on, you know. So from that standpoint, yeah. Kobe, what do you think after all these years you can still get I mean, you know, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's just – Looks too realistic, I guess. You know, you, you make a couple, and, and then you get them hedging a little bit, and you know that one for big guys tends to work a lot, you know, because they feel like they can really, you know, block the shot because how big they are, and so yeah, that tends to work on big guys in the post pretty often. What kind of matchup or moments stood out to you tonight with just going against? Man, it, it, it's just it's just fun. You know, I, I enjoy the physicality of it. I mean, it's not, you know, it, uh, playing against them. It's fun to. Because of his size, you know, always it's always fun to bump with him and to have that physicality and backing him down and then him driving and bumping and all that stuff. And you know, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's fun. After the Warriors game, you were talking about how Draymond Green needs to kind of be that guy to create that, that tension if they can make it, you know, all the way. Is that the same with any team, you know, with the Cavs as well? And who you know, it all depends on the personality. I mean, you have to be true to who you are and authentic. And I think every team should have that lightning rod, you know, because, um, you know, the happy-go-lucky stuff doesn't work. I mean, I don't care what anybody says or what you – people, people's perception is of a team. You, know, you have to have that inner conflict. You know, you have to have that person that's really driving these things. So, you know, from the Cavs – perspective it's uh it's hard for me to tell from afar who should be that person lebron's not that person lebron's a it, it's a he's a you know he's uh he brings people together i mean that's what he does naturally you know he's phenomenal at it you know but you have to have somebody else that's going to create that tension and you know maybe it's kyrie at, at times it sort of looked like a, a game within a game lebron did it sort of feel like that like it was sort of I mean, maybe. I mean, in certain moments. I mean, it's it's. Uh, you know, we both enjoy having those matchups, you know. And uh, you know, there are times when he was trying to post me up, and you know, I'm waving my teammates to get the hell away and don't do not double. Let me. <laughs> this is fun. I, I don't. I don't want doubles ever. You know. And so, uh, so from that standpoint, I, yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, you know, if I was him, you know, the thing I'd be obsessing over is, is you know, dealing with those boys up in Golden State, right? So, you know, just from a leadership perspective and how you construct the team and the personality of the team, you have to make sure that you're ready to do battle for that if you're fortunate enough to get there and Golden State's fortunate enough to get there, right? I mean, that's the problem, right? So from that standpoint, you have to figure that out. You can't leave it to chance. You can't leave it, you know, you have to really study and so hopefully his mind's focused on that. It's not focused on where he at, where he's at, where he is in his career and how far he is and you know, you have to focus on the problem. Can you recall your initial thoughts about LeBron?
I thought he had a tremendous amount of potential. I thought he saw the floor extremely well. And then it was a matter of really be able to stretch the floor, you know, with the with the jump shot consistently. You know, he was uh, he was ambidextrous at an early age. Um, but the big question was trusting the jump shot. And uh, you know, as you can see throughout his career, he's really evolved to be able to do that and keep defenses honest. Did you, did you feel extra spry tonight or anything like that? Did you know that you were nah. Gonna, like, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I mean, you know, listen, I told LeBron, I said, man, if you don't let me cut you on the post, I'll score when I'm 80. You know what I mean? That's like grown man, old man game, man. I catch it on the post. It doesn't matter. You know, I don't have to be loose or anything like that. I mean, I'm just going to bump, turn, fade, bump, turn, fade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so to answer your question, no. <laughs> no, but I was able to catch the ball, free throw line below, and, you know, and operate, so. Ciao, piacere. You said the Bandy wants to be in Italiano. Ci spieghi, l'hai già detto due volte, però io te lo chiedo di nuovo. Ti dispiace non aver incontrato Di Bruyne in una finale? No, no, non importa. L'unica cosa che è importante è vincere i campionati. Um, però mi piacerebbe, mi è piaciuto moltissimo se, se magari abbiamo giocato una volta nel finale. Um, però vincere i campionati è la cosa che è più importante. E magari tornare in Italia, visto che adesso hai... Beh, no, tornerò per, per, per fare camps o cose così, però per giocare sul serio no, 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 non posso, no, non posso, non posso, fisicamente non posso. No, I didn't even think about it. Like, it never registered. You know, my mind on all those matchups was always long term. You know what I'm saying? So, like, me playing LeBron on a Christmas day or playing him on a Tuesday in Cleveland meant zero to me. And I mean, I know it's hard for people to really understand that, but it meant zero because there was so much pressure that I put on myself to get this team to a championship that I was always looking at where we were going to end up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now it's it's different because I you know, get a chance to actually enjoy the matchup with him as opposed to thinking, okay, where are my teammates at this moment in time? How are they progressing? Where is this going to get us at the end of the day? You know, So it's a different feeling. It's a weird question, but what, what percentage of your career did you really enjoy <laughs> as you were playing? No, I enjoyed it all. I mean, no, you know, it's not like I didn't enjoy it. I, I love the work. I love the process. I love figuring that stuff out. You know what I mean? I, I've, if I didn't, I wouldn't be playing for 20 years. You know what I mean? So it, it's just a different emotion when you get a chance to kind of step back and like appreciate the competitors versus trying to break them down and pick them apart and then think about your teammates and where they're going and where we're going. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, different, it's a different kind of fun, I guess. I'm going outside and playing versus staying in the house and making games up myself. <laughs> Along those same lines. What, 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 what's the, what's the, what is it that you think is going to be fun about that matchup? I'm sorry? With, again, with the Knicks, Bill, Carmelo. Oh, bumping Carmelo, man. That's, that's, you know, he's a he's a bear, man. I'm, I'm going to look forward to uh, matching up with him, man. It's it's uh, it's going to be fun. Gonna be fun. Obviously, I know what they're going to be running, obviously. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> probably help Carmelo out and tell him where to go in certain spots on the floor. So. These final matchups are obviously special for you, but just overall, even these kind of moments, you seem to be genuinely enjoying these and, and happy in this. Are you just really good at acting, or is this like you're you actually kind of enjoying this all one last time? I've always been a smart ass. I'm still a smart ass now. You know what I mean? So I think um, now it's just, you know, it's a little different because I'm, we're not playing. I'm not, it's not the championship at the end. Right? And I don't play around with that. You know, I sit here years ago and I'm talking to you guys. I understand what's at stake, and it's not funny to me. It's not. It's not a game to me. You understand? It's very, very serious to me. So that's why I wouldn't be up here smiling and joking around. I mean, this is. It's like, we got a job to do. <laughs> we can smile after we win a championship, and, you know, and do all that sort of stuff. Uh, now, obviously, you know, it's not. Not the case. <laughs>